Alrighty, we're on episode number 10 of Social Leverage, and we're talking about Pinterest marketing. And Rob was just talking before I pressed the record button about, well, you should just tell them because. I don't want to. Okay, well, <laughs> he was talking about how he just did a redesign of his website, and he's made all his images Pinterest friendly, and he's been getting a lot of site traffic from that. Right. And you know, the old site was uh, 18 months old, and I thought it was time to redesign it. And Can we just appreciate for a moment that in 2016, 18 months old anything is ancient? <laughs> old. old. <laughs> yeah, you know, it used to be that you could design a site and let it sit there for 10 years, and people were like, wow. But nowadays, you have to refresh that site at least, you know, every six to nine months. And and yeah. I know that to some people, that's a lot of money that they got to shell out, or they have to start learning code. For me, it's you know, it's what I do. So, you know, well, I have to, I have to keep my stuff fresh so people come see it. Yeah, and one thing that's good too is there's a lot more friendly drag and drop type softwares and programs like Squarespace and all this stuff that is a little bit more. Um, user-friendly user -friendly. i use a program well actually i use a wordpress theme called divi and it's very easy to use now there's you know like everything there's a hurdle you have to a learning curve you have to come up you know get over but once you learn it it's it's basically a drag and drop it's you know you put things where you want them to be and once you have a site that looks somewhat decent then you can start putting your plugins and uh the, the one that we're using for the Pinterest, I think is a, is a just a general pin it. And, and it actually will put a, a Pinterest logo on every single picture that you have on your site. Yeah. You know, and, and now people can go to my site and they can, they can pin it to their site and as a reference or as something that they want others to see. And it makes your website, you know, get more traffic. Absolutely. And, you know, so a lot of people assume that Pinterest is, um, is, it's an interesting kind of social platform and many people like really, really love it and use it a lot while other people are, it's not like they hate Pinterest. It's more like this neutral, um, you know, it's not really my thing. Um, so I don't use it type, type feeling I would say. Um, but one thing that's interesting about Pinterest is that while it's a social media platform, it's technically more of a search engine and almost organizing slash indexing type site. Um, there is ways to like message people and comment, but really the goal is to get your content repinned and then to get viewers to click on the images of the site to to view your website. That is those are basically the two goals of having a Pinterest at all. And I think what's really interesting about that is it makes it almost a more, an easier way to build out a following because people love, like people will just stumble across. It doesn't take too long to build a Pinterest following I've noticed. Um, there's a few ground rules to Pinterest and it's not like written in stone rules, but it's sort of one of these things. It's an unspoken, you need to have good graphics. <laughs> you need to have really good graphics on Pinterest. The demographic is um, higher bracket income women mainly. Um, so middle to higher income bracket people who are shoppers and designers and so you can't just throw up a photo like you would on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or wherever. So it's definitely a good platform for people and brands who are design heavy. Now, here's a trick that, that actually uh, got me slammed off of Pinterest for a little bit, and I didn't know it. Uh, with every picture that you put up, make sure that that picture is associated. You know, if you're going to have a link associated with the picture that you're putting up, make sure it's actually on that link. So if I was sharing a lot of pictures and I actually put my link to my website, but those pictures weren't on my website, that could be considered spam. Yes. And so, clickbait. right. So Pinterest actually shut my Pinterest, my, my site down, my uh, page down for a while. And I wasn't quite sure why, 
you know, and, and I would go in and, and I'd try to type in my, my website and they said, no, it's, it's considered spam. We can't share your website. I said, what's going on? So after investigating and calling Pinterest and getting them to, you know, they finally re relinquished and said, um, you know, we're sorry this happened. You know, uh, this is what will prevent it. Just keep it clean. You know, if you're going to share stuff from your site, make sure it's coming from your site. So now, uh, because I put that pin it on my website, everything now goes to my, you know, everything that's being pinned now comes from my website. Right. Yeah. And also uh, I had a similar thing happen with a client actually, and we got banned because they said it was spam content and our site looked spammy. And our site definitely was not spammy at all. Like it, it, you could glance at it for two seconds and know that it was a legitimate business. And so basically what happened is after like, probably I'd say two and a half, three months, they of constant like nagging and emailing, they finally got our site back and it was a mistake. So sometimes they'll just, cause their crawlers mainly are looking at the content and they're just trying to find key algorithm type things that say, hey, this is spam. And while we had beautiful graphics, you know, in-house made design, all this other stuff, they still, accidents happen. It, it sucks, but it happens. And so they were able to reinstate, but sometimes it's literally, it's not even something you do for, um, for them to ban the site. Um, and typically bugging them with a lot of emails helps and Another thing that helps too is having examples of your content. So send them screenshots of like, hey, this is my content, this is not spam, and that will help. But anyway, um, let's talk about SEO. A lot of people talk about how Pinterest, and people say that a lot of social media sites create backlinks for your website, but I've also heard from website developers that they're not necessarily the highest rated backlinks. But at the same time, Pinterest is still a good source of traffic to a website. So it might not be the best in terms of, of backlinking. And I'm not sure, do you know, because it's not tech, it's kind of like its own search engine. So when people say social media platforms are lower backlink friendly, is Pinterest included in that? What happens is, you know, when you search for Google with any term, Google's going to give you options. So you're going to have your, your main, you know, options that they're going to give you that always you're going to display on that, that first screen. But then up at the top, it'll give you images, videos, right. more. And a lot of my Pinterest uh, uh, images are being displayed in the image section. Yeah. So, you know, if you're searching for images, if you're searching for, you know, uh, or maybe a customer is searching for something and they actually land on your picture because they're searching for images, that's what is the whole purpose of Pinterest. It, to yeah. my opinion, anyway, is because, yes, you're putting a lot of pictures up there. You're putting a lot of images or even uh, video clips but you want them to indirectly be able to find you. And the more right. descriptions that you have, you know, for that picture, whether it be, you know, seven tips to do this. And then in your description is seven tips to make your pictures on Pinterest better. Right. You know, people yeah. are, that is going to actually enhance your SEO power. And if you have a link that goes back to your website, they're going to want to know more about you. Absolutely. Definitely. And also it, um, it's important to always link back to your website. Um, I mean, unless you're repinning somebody else's content, which is also, you know, you should repin other people's content that is relevant to your industry. It creates a nice, um, <clears throat> uh, you're just sharing other people's content because that's the thing with social media platforms. It's still at the end of the day, a social media platform. And so at the same time, when you do your own content, always link back to your website because you, you you just lose power not doing it. A lot of people use Pinterest in a way that's almost like they're indexing ideas. I know that's the way I would approach Pinterest as somebody who likes design. Uh, I like typography, I like graphic design, and so and I like architectural design, so interior designing. And so if I were to be using Pinterest, I would be bookmarking ideas. And so that's, it's really like a bookmarking site for people with ideas. I know 
a lady, she's a local wedding planner and she uses Pinterest for um, ideas about, you know, her weddings and planning out weddings and the color schemes that are really popular during the year and all that, the setups that she'll want to present to her clients. And um, so if you're in the event space, you might want to use it for that. If you're in interior design space, there's a lot of you'll want to showcase your own interior design while also garner uh, gaining ideas from other designers. And so, yeah, it, it's a great way to get your site out there. And it doesn't take long for people to start repinning and finding your content. It's pretty amazing. You know, I was I was actually researching somebody and I, I ran across their Pinterest and they're more of a motivating uh, person. You know, they go out and motivate people or they sell, you know, stuff to help motivate. You know, and, and in one of their uh, pins, because uh, you can you can categorize stuff was all about their vision board. Mm -hmm. And in this, and in their section where it's vision board, it had, you know, everything that they ever wanted to accomplish, you know, their, their dream vacation, their dream car, dream, dream house. And, and that particular vision board, that, that <clears throat> pen had more <clears throat> followers than their main one did, but it was driving traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes, so sometimes you may want to, um have different pins or different boards on your pinterest to give people an idea not just because you're trying to sell them something but because you want them to get ideas that will help them to educate them so that the next time they're going to come back and say hey you know what rob that was a brilliant idea i really like that mm -hmm. you know tell me more about what you do or how you can help me yeah and also a lot of times people will come to your pinterest and then follow your site if they really like what they see. So that first, obviously the first initial um, look is really important to captivate the person. Um, along those lines too, you were talking about the boards. You can, what's cool about Pinterest, given that it's a very organization bulletin board type platform, is that when you are creating the account, you can create categories. So it's not like this one, conglomerate of images like on Instagram or on Facebook where there's really no organization. You can create boards that uh, zero in on specific targets. So like Rob, he serves, you know, doctors and lawyers. Well, he could have boards dedicated to social media for dentists. He could have social media or online marketing or website design for doctors. And he could have a board specifically for lawyers and, you know, or, you know, uh, other types of doctors that he serves, he could have boards for each of the specific types of clients that he serves. And all that content is then focused within the board on that specific topic. And so you have this opportunity to say, okay, we do marketing for these types of clients. And now if you fall under one of these categories, you can learn about, about this. I have a client there in the gardening space and they publish gardening, um, information and so it's like we have a board for gardening for sustainability gardening for family diy projects healthy food cooking in the garden um and so people who are interested in those different topics can go to the specific board or they can just follow you as a general you know board and they just get everything well, it looks like dean from from advanced carpet cleaning just joined us and, and welcome dean you know, for, for a carpet cleaner like yourself, you can actually create a board for the different services that you offer in your hometown. So when someone's typing in maybe rug cleaning or tile cleaning, you know, your Pinterest uh, pins are going to start pulling up. And that's going to, hang on, my phone's giving me. Um, and so that's going to give you, can't put my phone anywhere. Okay. Um, so that's going to give you a little bit more of a push on your Pinterest and get people to follow you. And um, so, you know, carpet cleaning is is a big thing. You know, at, at people are always looking for DUI or, you know, do-it-yourself type projects. But when they can find a professional who can do it better than them because they don't want to bust their back, they don't want to, you know, mess up their carpets. Well, they just don't have time. Right. So, you know, Pinterest for for any type of service business is going to help explode 
you know, you're following because it's going to give people ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're in a home taking pictures, you know, not of their valuables, but of the things that you're cleaning, you know, those are examples that you can put on your, your Pinterest boards. Yeah. And also, um, one area of Pinterest is very important. Um, it's not a site that general, gen, generally likes the use of hashtags. And in fact, they even have an entire PDF guide. Pinterest itself has a PDF guide about why you should not use hashtags on Pinterest. They don't really like that. It gets spammy. It's cluttery. And so, you know, I admire the site for doing that because it keeps um, spam down. But what is very important is your description in Pinterest. The more, and I would treat it like you would treat your meta description when you're filling that out. It's like what would captivate somebody, but what would also show up in search? And, you know, what would make you click this link if you saw, you know, 160, 170 characters about, you know, this particular pin? So, I'm not you could you could take a paragraph or a little couple sentences from your article itself and I would say even take the extra step and sort of recraft something that you've maybe already said in the article or just come up with something new altogether sometimes people have a real um, hard time coming up with new things all the time and that's cool but figure out ways to creatively recraft so you're not just repeating yourself but that, you know, that like, description is very important. Just not, don't stuff it with hashtags or use a bunch of hashtags. Yeah, I, I love sharing my blogs uh, for my website to Pinterest because I, it helps get more traffic. So, you know, if, if you're inclined to write blogs, which I, you know, encourage everyone that has a website to at least write a couple blogs, you know, blog articles every single month. We covered that uh, before in, in one of these calls. So, mm -hmm. Go back and, and watch them. Um, you can catch the replays on on uh, on our uh, social leverage uh, group page on Facebook. But you know, it's it's going to give you an audience, an extra audience that you didn't have before. You know, not pinning that blog. So you know, make sure that if you have a blog, that you're taking advantage of it, mm -hmm. that you're utilizing Pinterest to get those pictures out. Now, you know, I, I posted a a blog this morning. Um, it was, you know, seven tips to, to make your pictures on your blogs better. Um, and when you share type, you know, tips like that out to Pinterest, it's actually going to get a better response than just putting an, an, a regular picture up there. Right. You know, right. Pinterest is more of a, it was designed, I think, at first as a crafty type uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of projects that I, that were forced upon me around the house because of Pinterest, uh, darn you Pinterest, <laughs> but for a marketing standpoint, Pinterest is one of those, uh, unsung heroes that help, you know, us business or us entrepreneurs get more business because, you know, when, especially for carpet cleaning and, and here's why is that, you know, Pinterest is more of a of a, a, what I call a, a dominant female social media network where people are going to look for answers. Yeah. And, and if they find that you're the best carpet cleaner because you're giving them the answers they're looking for, they're gonna be more inclined to call you. It's very yeah. much, it's very much like a social search engine for sure. Um, that's a really good point too. And something that I think a lot of people will find easier about Pinterest is you don't have to spend a lot of time getting into like personal details about yourself or crafting stories about who you are. I think, I think sometimes that uh, trips people up a little bit. They're like, well, I don't know how to do that. I suck at writing. I hate writing. I'm not good at video. I don't want to take the time to craft all these stories. I, you know, just different um, mental blocks on creating that type of content. Whereas with Pinterest, you write a blog post and then you share the blog post. <laughs> and and everything should be driving traffic to your website. It is a great, great, great platform for driving traffic to your website. And I'll, I'll say one thing, several of my clients, we set it up and within a week, people are getting traffic to their website mm -hmm. via Pinterest. I mean, there's not many social media accounts today that you can say within a week, you're actually getting good results. Right. 
I mean, maybe yeah. within a month, maybe within three months, but not like within the week you're getting traffic to your site. You know, and, and as we explained on some of our other shows that every social media network is a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, Twitter is different than Facebook. Facebook is different than Instagram. Instagram is different than Pinterest. Right. You know, each one has its pros and cons. Each one will uh, get clients differently. You know, and each one will utilize, you know, uh, aspects such as hashtags differently, you know, whereas we encourage you to use as many hashtags as you can, you know, on Instagram, Pinterest, no, don't use them at all mm -hmm. because it's not going to help you. You know, Pinterest is more of a, you know, long description. Tell us what you, you know, it's all about, you know, how, the benefits and, 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 and the features and let us look at what you're doing. And then we'll, if we like it, we'll repin it to somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Dean, Dean says, great information. I never knew Pinterest was good tool for marketing. It, it is. And then, like I said, it's one of those unsung heroes when it comes to social media, because Pinterest, I think has gotten a bad rap as more of a crafty type mm -hmm. social media network and less of a social uh, networking site. And also you know, a lot of people want to go onto us when they think of a social network, they think, Oh, I'm going to go on and I'm going to interact. And Pinterest is more like, Oh, I'm going to go on and I'm going to look at ideas. And so there's a little bit of disconnect, which is why I kind of try whenever I'm talking about, it, I tr try to tell people this is really more of a social indexing type site as opposed to a social media platform. I mean, yeah, you can chat and talk to people, but that's not at all the purpose, as I said earlier in the beginning of, of this show. And it's very important distinction because it makes the platform easier for people to use, actually. You know, when I first got on Pinterest, you know, I did what everybody else was doing and I made these categories where, hey, it's this is my favorite TV shows and these are my favorite books. And these are, and then after a while I'm like, instead okay, of just like entertainment, is, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of dumb. I mean, nobody cares what about, you know, you know, a TV show I liked in the eighties and, you know, and, and it's like, how do I really use this? And then you just end up like dumping everything into like one general board and that's still not the right way to use it. Yeah. So then I, I created, you know, a board just for quotes and memes and, and this, and then I created one just for the business because, you know, I wanted all my blogs to go here. You know, then I, uh, then I created one just for my books mm -hmm. or, or books that I think that other people should be reading. Yeah. And, and when I started doing that, people started gravitating towards my pictures. They wanted to know more. And, you know, the books that I was writing, they, wanted, they were sharing them out. The books that, that I was reading, they were sharing them out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and now that I have, you know, pins on everything on my website, people are now sharing those images, which is great and creepy at the same time, because then I go look for an, an image or do a, a, a search on my website to see where my images are showing up. And they're all coming from, you know, Pinterest backlinks. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool on, you know, you raised a good point on the organization of boards. I think a lot of people are confused. They're like, well, every time I pin something that doesn't fit under a specific category, do I create a new board? And then that gets cluttered. And then you're like, what on earth? And I know for people like me who aren't necessarily naturally um, used to being organized, the concepts just like, um, why don't I just stick everything in one board and you will eventually find it. Um, so that being said, it's important to organize boards, right? I know a site that does it, uh, account that does it very well is I just had it open the other day. Um, darn it, uh, Nordstrom does it really well. There's one of them. Um, let me pull it up. Um, so they have. If you pull, if you look up Nordstrom online, they have anniversary sale. So anytime they have some Nordstrom related anniversary and it's related to sales, that's where they go. Um, they have um, all dressed up, so fashion-y, dressing up, fancy outfit type things. Spring fashion is a different board, so anything spring-related. Um, Nordstrom Fashion Week, so 
when the Nordstrom reps are at the various fashion week shows. They have beauty, shoes, gift ideas, um, quotes that people have said, holiday, fall fashion. So you see they've got general categories for everything, but not like movies, um, TV shows. It's more just like, this is the entertainment I like, and this is the nonfiction that I like, and these are the quotes I like. So yeah, if, if you're in whatever market you're in, think about the general categories you talk about and make boards around that and have everything kind of fall under um, what those general categories. Now, Dean, if you're still here, I think you are, but you know, categories that you could probably use, I'm still getting feedback, um, would be maybe before and after pictures, uh, testimonials where you can, you know, video your clients or even take pictures of them. Um, you know, images from your employees, uh, maybe even the equipment that you use. So now you have these different categories that you're sharing out, you know, so one day you could be sharing out just the before and after pictures that you give, send, you send people the link, Hey, check out our, our before and after pictures on Pinterest, or, you know, uh, take a look at what some of our employees are saying, you know, or, or our testimonials from our clients. Yeah. Right. So that this way, each one of your categories is different and you can focus on building each one out better. And yeah, I mean, I would start with like four or five. That way you're not overwhelmed with like 50 different categories. Cause if you go to some Pinterest page that are well-developed, you just scroll and scroll and they have like hundreds of categories and you're just like, this takes a full time staff to keep up with like half of these. Um, so definitely start with a couple get a rhythm going, get them filled out, get some followers, get some traffic, and then just create a board for another category when you're ready to do that. I mean, heck, even if you start with two boards, that's fine. I mean, the goal, again, is driving traffic to your website, and that's well, the main key. I believe that Pinterest still has secret boards. Yes. You know, and, and some of the secret boards that you could create, maybe even for a service-type business like Dean's, would be coupons you know, specials only available, you know, through uh, a special link that, you know, you can send out through your email or through, you know, Facebook where it'll only go to that uh, secret board. Yeah. And you can publish it when you want and then unpublish it. That way only a select type of group is seeing that those coupons, those specials, and you're not, it's not going out being blasted out to everybody. Right. Especially if you're a local business, because you don't want somebody from like California or wherever you're from, somewhere from far away from wherever your location is, um, calling you and being like, oh, I want my carpet cleaned. And then that's like, well, I mean, you don't live anywhere near me. So, you know, it's Pinterest is just something you're going to have to get used to. You know, it's like I said, it's different than everything else out there. You know, and, and over the course of the show that we've had 10 episodes, we've talked about, you know, Snapchat. We've talked about, you know, Instagram. We've talked about Facebook groups. And and Pinterest is different than all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think what gets people kind of hung up on the whole thing is the categories. Is, you know, you're going to have to spend a little time to get to know how Pinterest works. Whereas, you know, Facebook is very easy. You just jump in and start going. Right. You know, tw Twitter takes a little, I think, time to get to know the flow of things. But, you know, Pinterest is, is that network that I think everybody needs to use, but they're afraid to use it. Yeah. And I would start by following people either in your niche or also people who uh, fall under categories of interest that you kind of like, you know, scrolling about and seeing photos of on social media and just see how they use it. Um, just bookmark ideas so that you can do it or things that you don't want to do. Cause I've seen some boards where it's like you go and it seems like they have a board for every single category under the sun, like everything they pin is a new category. And so there's like thousands and thousands of boards and their photos look you know, subpar, not very good. And you don't want to do that. Like you don't want somebody to come to your account and be like, I really don't like any of this content. 
especially if they're a customer or a potential customer. I mean, if they're not a customer or never will be and they just don't fall in your demographic, whatever, you're not making content for them, so that's not relevant. But if it's somebody who's your target and they see your content and it and it just doesn't look good to them, then you don't want to alienate that just because you're using the same photos that you use on Instagram or you're just uploading Snapchat photos on Pinterest. You really, 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 I can't emphasize this enough, is about design. You have to nail a good design. And I would say uh, keep the design in line with your branding and use it over and over so it doesn't take you hours to create graphics. You know, and, and if you're a small entrepreneur, you know, that doesn't want to put a lot of time into social media, you know, especially with Pinterest, then create yourself maybe four categories, you know, like with, we're going back to Dean is, is, you know, you got your general carpet cleaning site, maybe, you know, some of your services, your before and after pictures, you know, and, and, and maybe one or two other categories. That's it. Keep it simple. You know, if you're, you know, if you're Sears or Home Depot and you got like a hundred categories, that's fine. Yeah. But the problem with that is now you need a full-time social media staff person to constantly be putting images and descriptions into all those categories. All day long. And, you know, all, yeah. And, and it, it, it just, it'll drive you nuts. So keep it simple, you know, grow it as you need to, but start small and, you know, keep it, keep it to a category that you can manage. Yeah. Like your job is to be on social media, but it's not necessarily to be on social media all day, 24 seven. And if you have a category for everything, you're going to be on social media for a long time. So, you know, I think we, you know, we covered a lot in a half hour. That's that, you know, Pinterest is just one of those things that I, I recommend to everybody, but I, I think there's still a lot of people that just don't see the full power of it mm -hmm. or they just, they don't understand it. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I've been, like I said, I was on Pinterest for, for many years before I fully understood how I can actually make money doing it, you know, right. using it or developing a following or getting people to call me. And um, so, you know, with a few changes to your existing website, you know, if, you, if it's a WordPress website, then you can get a plugin that goes right on your site and makes every single image Pinterest ready. Yeah, and, and, and also if you sell, if you're an e-commerce business, and you sell products, whether it's books, ebooks, whatever it is, if you're in e-commerce, uh, you can create buyable pins. So people, it, essentially you're creating, it's not really a shopping cart, but it's like, it tells people that this is a product that they can buy as opposed to, oh, this is just a pretty image and linked to a blog article. It adds like a specific tag on that pin that says buyable. And I think it's called buyable pin. And uh, people can just immediately from there go and buy your product. They can either, you know, either you're redirecting them to your Amazon shop or you're redirecting them to your shopping cart on your website and they can browse your product category, uh, catalog and buy content. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. If you're an e-commerce person, there are um, a lot of options like rich pins, which help you gain leverage by adding extra information to your Pinterest um, and buyable pins and all that stuff. So yeah, lots of fun things to dive into with Pinterest. You know, and, and you can still repin other people's stuff and that's what's great about it. So if you find, if maybe you're in, in carpet cleaning, but there's a service that you don't offer, maybe window cleaning, you know, you can still put, you know, those pins on your site to yeah. give people an idea that, hey, it is cleaning related. It's going to help you, you know, check it out. They're going to say, wow, that, that was so great. I'm glad you did that. And, and, and they're going to recommend you to someone else. Absolutely. You know, we got a new, new person that just popped in. Hello, uh, Tyler. Welcome Tyler. Uh, we're talking about Pinterest <clears throat> and how you can benefit from it. Now, over the last 30 minutes, we threw a lot of information out there. And uh, I, I apologize, we're not going to repeat all that, but you can <laughs> come back and, and get the replay, which is going to be on our social, which is going to be on our social uh, leverage uh, group page on Facebook. And the link is, you know, right above there and, and under Devani's name. 
and uh, you click on that, join, become a member. You're, you're going to see all these replays. You're going to see episodes one through 10. We'll get them up there. Well, I, I think two through 10. I think uh, one is lost somewhere in the uh, nether regions of, of the info space. But More like the monster of my inbox. Because <laughs> Blab emails the recordings. It's, it's somewhere. But, you know, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's all about utilizing your leverage. So whether it be you're a carpet cleaner, whether you're be, you know, a social media guru, whether it be, you know, you're, you're, you're a titan of industry, you still need to use social media to leverage what you're doing to convince someone, you know, whether they should know, like, or trust you. And hopefully to trust you. Yeah. And the <clears> because thing about Pinterest too, is that we, that we've been talking about for, for the uh, duration of the show is that it's one of those platforms that is also a traffic generating platform for your website and a very, very quick traffic generating platform because uh, I mentioned earlier, several of my clients within a week of creating an account, they're getting traffic to their site. Is it, you know, a thousand hits a day? No. Is it 10? Yeah. <laughs> and that's 10 people that might not have clicked and something to consider and uh, Rob and I see analytics across all social media platforms all the time. Unless you're boosting a post, it's very hard to, or if you have a ginormous following, um, if you don't have that base of people, um, then you are not reaching a whole lot of people unless you're putting an ad spend behind it or, again, have a big following. And you can't get the results as quickly on many other platforms. I mean, even Instagram, it takes a little bit of time to build a large following, even if you use a ridiculous amount of hashtags. Um, does Pinterest allow video blogs? Yes, you can upload video to Pinterest. Um, I would say make sure it's important there um, to have a good cover image on your video, a very well designed, like if you're uploading it to YouTube, have a really nicely designed thumbnail. But you can do that. Now I know some some platforms are limiting how much uh, video content you can put up. You know, minute wise. You know, uh, I think Facebook just increased their their minute. Uh, I think it was fifteen minute limit. Now they increased it, but I'm not sure what it was. Uh, YouTube is is YouTube is hours and hours now. Yeah, YouTube like you can have. They give you like fifteen minutes, and then you can like verify your account. And it jumps up to like, oh, now you could like have hours. There's a guy, there's a really cool musician, Adrian Von Ziegler. He does like Celtic music and stuff, right? He puts like two, three, two to three hour video clips of his music for free just on YouTube. It's insane. Like it's an amazing amount of value. I mean, he has an enormous following and he definitely doesn't have to do that. But um, I think a good lesson there is just the insane amount of value that you can add, whether you're on Pinterest or any other social media platform, that is the key. Add a ridiculous amount of value and people will like you. Right, and you know, like I tell everybody, you know, if you're, if you're getting into video, you know, keep it to three to four minutes and, and, and you know, pose a question, answer the question, or, or here you go, it says, pose a question, introduce yourself, answer the question and give people an idea where they can get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. So phone number, website, you know, whatever. But turn all those questions that people have into blog posts that yeah. you can share on Pinterest, into videos that you can share to Pinterest. You know, everything can be shared to Pinterest. Well, not everything, but in a fashion that gets people to, to come back and, and share it and repin it. Does everything that you post on social media need to go on Pinterest? No. But your pictures, yeah. your videos, no. you know, your tips should go to Pinterest. Oh, yeah. A lot of information-based content is amazing for Pinterest. Or, again, if you're a designer, uh, whether it's fashion, uh, house design, um, whatever it is, office space design organization, then, you know, amazing images of design. So it's either high-quality design or tips and projects. Uh, comment below. It says, I have 170,000 subscribers on YouTube. Congratulations. I, I think that's awesome. Now, one of the things I suggest for everybody that's on YouTube is take your thumbnails of all your videos and share them on Pinterest yes. and, and give people a link back to your YouTube 
and give, you know, put a description of what that, that thumbnail is all about. So if you're making all these videos, you know, now you got people on Pinterest that want to know more about you. Right. So now you're getting new subscribers. And you're getting to, link backs to your YouTube channel instead of, because if you put the, if you upload the video just to Pinterest, they're going to watch it there and they might not even bother clicking through because they've right. watched it already. I mean, unless right, you, sure. it's a really, really, really good video and they're like, I want to see, you know, the dozens of other videos you have, then they don't have a, um, reason to go back and be like, Oh, I'm going to subscribe. Cause most people, they watch a video and they're done. You know, so I mean, when you share, when you share that thumbnail, you know, it gives people an image, you know, that thumbnail may have some content, you know, might have, you know, uh, check out my next, you know, daredevil video, whatever. Um, oh, and, crazy. and they would has it, with Red Bull. <laughs> right. and, and now it has a description and it gives a link back to your YouTube. You're getting subscribers. And from, from your YouTube, you can actually make a video saying, hey, you know, I'm getting all this traffic from Pinterest. Check it out. Now everybody's flying over to your Pinterest to see what's going on over there. Yeah. So you're creating, you know, a link wheel, but it's really helping generate more followers, fans, and hopefully buyers to you. Oh, link wheel is so much easier to say. Brendan Burchard calls it circular virality, which sounds highly intelligent and very hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> so keep it simple. Link wheel. Link wheel. Link. I like that. Yeah. So I think we've covered most everything. We've covered everything about everything, guys. I know. I, it's just it's incredible. But, you know, like I said, we have hours and hours of shows that you can watch, episodes uh, two through ten now. That'd be ten uh, hours. Yeah, and, and so it gives you a lot of social media content, a lot of ways to leverage what you're doing, and we hope to see you back on a future show. And if you have questions, whether it be Pinterest, whether it be Instagram, whether it be whatever social media network that, that you're having problems with, you know, Bring them to our uh, group page. Let us know. Or if you want to, we'll make a show. About it. Bounce an idea. Yeah, if you have an idea for a future show, we'll we'll do that too. But we want to give you the ability to leverage your authority, so that you're making more money. Absolutely, that is the key to all of this: leveraging everything. Alrighty, guys, that is a wrap. We will see you next Wednesday. I hope and. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on. And thank you guys for joining us. You're awesome. Absolutely. See you later.